Hi, I'm Ron Polk. In the last video down in the shop, I built this shim cutting jig out of a couple of pieces of scrap three quarter plywood and about 30 minutes of shop time. And this works on the table saw. And what I get from it are these perfect seven inch shims with very sharp tips and two different thicknesses. And I get to make it out of dug fir, which is a better material for shims than the traditional cedar you get at the lumber store that you pay for. So free shims, better shims, 30 minutes of shop time made from scrap plywood. What I'm gonna do today is build this model in SketchUp so that you can download it and, and build this simple jig for yourself. Now, of course, watching the video, you'll see the techniques for building it, but if you want the model to measure and uh, build it exactly like this, then this will be for you. Now, if you don't want to use SketchUp and build it yourself, I've already uploaded this model, so just open up SketchUp, go into the 3D warehouse, type in CR Polk, enter. You'll see the models that I've uploaded. Just click on the shim cutter jig, download, and you want to download it directly in the model. Click. There you go. All you need to do is dimension it, maybe make a couple copies for different angles on a sheet of paper, print, and take it to the shop and build away. But if you want to learn a little bit about SketchUp and see how it can help you in your wood shop or your contracting business, then stick around for a few minutes and we'll build this and you may pick up a few tips. Okay, to start with, I'm going to click on the bird's eye view icon here. I'm going to tap the R key for rectangle. And I'm just going to draw an arbitrary rectangle just across there. And then I'm going to type in, oh, let's say 12, 9.5. The critical dimension is 9.5. That's from the uh, front to the back. Side to side, this is actually going to be cut down on the table saw. Now, in the shop, I built the base, put the handle on and put in the rail that rides in the miter track on the table saw and then ran this through the table saw. Even though I know exactly what this dimension is for the DeWalt saw, I wouldn't do it, I would not pre-make this. I would get the handle done, do all of that, run it through the table saw, then cut the angle. But because we're building the model and I need to start somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the dimensions for the DeWalt saw, but again, you don't even need to know the width, just make sure it's longer than you need and then make the cut and then the rest of it, the angles and all, will be exactly the same. It doesn't matter which table saw you have. Now what I want to do is know what this dimension is. And I remember it's seven and three quarters, but I'll hit the tape measure tool, which will give me the guideline tool. Come over and sure enough, seven and three quarters. Down from the top edge, I don't start the angle uh, at the top. It comes down one inch. So... And then from the bottom, the angle is up one inch. And it is in a half an inch because these are quarter inch steps. This is what gives you the two different thicknesses of shims. So I'll come over here, come down one, come up one. Come over seven and three quarters. 7.75 and if in the rest of the world you are using metric SketchUp is fine with that you can do this all in metric and then I want to come over quarter of an inch 0.25 enter and another quarter of an inch and then I want to come down 0.25 enter and that'll give me the stair step cut that I'm looking for. All right, so I need to make this cut here, starting, starting at this outside point at one inch in. So I'll start the cut, come straight down one inch in, then I'll cut this angle all the way across and then stair step back. So I'm just going to, now I haven't made a group yet, so I don't have to get in the group, but I do want to get in the surface. Hit the L key for line, start there, go to there. Come down to there, come across, down, across, and down. And now you can see that I've created two distinct surfaces. And I want to get rid of this one. 
You can see why I said I, the, the, the width was arbitrary. Just as long as it goes past your blade, that's all that matters. I'm going to edit, delete guides, file, save. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a group. Double click, right click, make group. And a group and component are the same thing. The, uh, there are reasons to do one or the other. In this case, I just have one instance of everything. So a group is all I need. The next thing I will do is go ahead and build the handle. So to make this uh, life a little easier, I will go in, I will make a copy, M key, tap the option key, hit move. I'm going to explode this. I'm going to get rid of the base and I'm going to get rid of that. I don't won't need that. And then I'm going to take this handle and use it as a, as a template to trace. So I'm going to hit the rectangle tool. And again, I know the dimensions of that are 4.25 comma 8.5 enter. I'm going to make a group, right click, make group. And because you won't have this handle, I'm going to show you how I drew this in the shop uh, to make it a little simpler. And to begin with, I need a guideline from the back edge here in to where this radius comes down is six inches. So at the tape measure tool, come over six, enter. And this will be the bottom. I know at some point I'm going to come up 0.25, enter. Okay, and then I used a paint can to make these radiuses in the shop, so I will go ahead and make a circle to represent that. Hit the C key, for circle. I know the paint can is 6.5 inches, so I need to type in 3.25, enter. Half of the, you know, when you're doing half of the radius is what you type in for circle because you're going from the center. And then I'm going to double click, right click, make a group. And then now, just as I did with the shop, I can drag this over. And I want to put the top edge on the where the top of the handle is. And on this side, I want to have it uh, come to this line here. That looks pretty good. All right. And then what I want to do is reverse that sweep. So I'll, uh, I've got this selected. I'll hit the M key for move. Just tap the option key. I don't hold it down. And I'll give me a copy. And that's pretty close right there. Now, each of these is a group, so they're not intersecting, which is good most of the time. But I now I want them to intersect because I want to end up with this final shape here. So I'm going to explode, explode, and explode. All these lines have intersected, so now I can come in and just highlight what I want to get rid of. All right, and so what I'm left with is what I'm going to cut with the jigsaw. So now I'll just take the handle and overlay it over that just so that I can, over this pattern, so that I can uh, figure out where this hole is going to go. And I am going to go ahead and make this a group, so double click, right click, make a group. Grab this, grab my move tool by tapping the M key, snap it right on there. So I will hit my tape measure tool, T key. I'll just grab this edge, come over, find center, 5 eighths. And so what I'll do to get a 90 degree off of this, I will grab the protractor. And once it's on, in this case, I want it in the blue direction if I were uh, on the side there and it was jumping around. So if, as soon as I get it in the blue direction, I just hold down the shift key and it'll stick there. And then I know I want to be 90 off of that. So I'll just come over here, click, pull down, click, and then just turn it 90 degrees. And then all I need to do is hit the tape measure tool. I'll orbit around by tapping the O key, hit the T key, grab off of that line and come down. And that gives me the two center points for my inch and a quarter holes. In the group, type the C for circle. And you can see where it snaps where the intersection is. 
And again, just like doing the paint cans, I draw it out. And I know this inch and a quarter, so I'm going to type in five eighths inner. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So now that I have these two circles, I will just grab here and go to there and delete what I don't need. All right. Now that I have it uh, the way I want it, I will double click on it, get in the group again. You know, I'm clicking on the surface, P for push pull, come up, 0.75, enter. The base, I'll go ahead and bring it up into three quarters. So double click, click again on surface, P key, come up, 0.75, enter. And I want to put the handle on the surface. I'm going to grab the T key for tape measure, come on this edge, 2.5, enter and I want it up about an inch. And so I'll click on this, this group, hit the M key for move. Just click on that corner for with the move tool, the M key, and drop it right in there, it snaps right in. R key, and I know I want it 3.5 comma 1.5, enter. I'm going to come up 0.75. All right. And now I just want to cut away that little section. So I'll get into that surface. Not a group yet, so I don't need to worry about getting into the group. Highlight what I don't want. Hit delete. Double click. Right click. Make group. Get in the group. P for push pull. Come up 0.75. Enter. So I want to place this in line with the back of the handle, which is one inch. So I already have that line there. And I want this front edge to line up with the very edge of the jig. Again, the table saw blade then will come right past and will not cut this. 3.5, enter. Grab this. Move. I need to rotate it. Hit the O key to orbit. And then I'm using my scroll wheel to uh, scroll in, M key for move, and then I just highlight whatever surface I want to rotate. Click on that, come down 90 degrees. Still have the move tool, I just grab that corner and it will snap right into where I want it. And now I want to make this, this uh, rail, a dado for the rail, 1.5, enter. And then I want to push it up a quarter, but I need to break this surface into three surfaces. So I'll double click to open the group, click again to get on the surface, L for the line tool. And all I need to do is find that intersection, push to there. Same thing, click on that intersection to there. And then just grab that surface in the middle, push it up, 0.25, enter, get out of the group. And then I want to make the, the rail that, that rides in the um, miter track. So to give it some color, I'll hit the B key for the bucket tool. I will hold down the command key, gives me the eyedropper, they'll select that color. And there you have it. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, support the channel. Also share it with others if possible. And if you've seen my workbenches in the other videos, you can go to my website by clicking right here on this link. It'll take you here. Once you get there, click on this Paul Holmes store. That will take you to the shopping cart and choose the plan or package of plans you want. As soon as you finish the purchase, Within a minute or so, you will receive an email. Make sure you scroll to the bottom of that email because there's a link and a password for you to get the plans immediately and print them. You don't have to wait. Day or night, you get the plans right away. And if you do build yourself one of the workbenches, please send me a photo. It'd really be nice if it was a photo with you with your bench, but at least a picture of your bench. And I'll post it on our Pinterest page. I will put a link for this Pinterest page in the description of this video, but you can go there and see uh, what other people have done. They've taken the plans and a lot of them have built them right off the plans. Others have modified them to meet their needs. One of the most recent photos I received was from Trevor 
And he took the design of the workbench and of the total station and put them together in three parts. So he's got the, the wider workbench as well as the total station. He can use them separately, but he can also join them and create a really big surface. So he has three surfaces as well as the extensions. Really excited to see that, see how creative people are. So again, send me a photo and I'll put it up here and other people can, can learn from your experiences as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.